Hi everyone, this week we're going to be doing a video uh, making a little gauge here for a project that uh, we've been doing for Top Line. And if you saw some of the previous videos with Mike Paulette over there, uh, you can uh, remember the little parts that we were turning. Uh, but basically, we're going to be doing some ID grinding uh, on the surface grinder with our uh, air spindle. And we got about, what, what's the size holes on there, Mike? Uh, 94 thousandths. And, okay, that's the high end? That's the high end, and then uh, 92 thousandths is the small end. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to attempt to grind uh, these small holes uh, so that he's got a quick go and go no check on his part because he's got very little room that he can uh, uh, measure with a mic. But before we get there, I just wanted to give you an update on the projects that we're working. Uh, if you saw the video on the differential screw, and I was looking at making an adjustment mechanism for the tailstock on this grinder I'm going to use. Uh, I mentioned uh, going with a wedge system and on my Instagram account I, I show how uh, slick this is working. But I've had a nice phone conversation with Robin Renzetti and so all my plans as far as uh, having this wedge system I'm going to still use that but instead of being in a tailstock it's going to be in a two pace uh, base system, but we'll cover that in the upcoming uh, video. So we'll still be using the wedge, but in a different location. Uh, this part right here has a little less than a half degree taper. Uh, this part here has a little less than a half a degree. Uh, and inside here, we have a quarter 20 set screw that actually uh, is wedged between this back piece and in here uh, within a few tenths, so there's very little slop in there. And the adjustment on this thing is very fine. So the, the wedge is tapped, and as I turn the set screw, uh, it will move that wedge. And as it moves that wedge, this part will raise or lower, depending on what direction I have. So if you come up over here to the amp, from here to here is two ten thousandths. I have it on its finest resolution. So that means that each of these little lines is five millionths of an inch. Not, five, not 50 millionths, 5 millionths. And so I want to demonstrate just how fine of an adjustment that this has. Right there is 1 tenth. There's 2 tenths. Just playing with this, I can I can stop that needle halfway between any of those marks. I can stop it wherever I want. Uh, it's that fine of an adjustment. And the only thing it has in there, it has a little anti seize on the screw, but there's nothing nothing else in there. But anyways, uh, uh, we just wanted to show you where we're at on that. We'll have an upcoming video. We originally were going to use this in a device to adjust the tailstock center of a, a unit that we we're going to OD grind between centers on the surface grinder. But after having a conversation uh, with Robin Rincini, we're going to change plans. We're still going to use this wedge device for adjustment, but instead of being in the tailstock, uh, we're going to have a two-part base and we're going to have that adjustment in the base of the unit and we'll explain all that in detail in the upcoming video. But anyways, we just want, thought we'd uh, let you uh, see some of the results of what we've been uh, experimenting with right here. We we're very pleased with it and we just thought we'd share that with you. surface grinder and I'll show you how I set that up here in a moment. Uh, we pull the wheel off. Uh, some of you that watched some of our previous uh, videos, you've seen the unit before. We're going to get this all set up and then we're going to uh, try to get this gauge ground out for Mike and we'll use gauge pins to measure everything.
Okay, what we're going to do is uh, show how easy this uh, is to switch from the surface draining uh, to the uh, air spindle. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take this wheel off. This is a left hand thread. Uh, we have the wheel off and now we got to take the guarding off. this set up so that when I indicate this block on the bottom and the side we should be good to go. It should line up the spindle uh, with the spin fixture when we have it mounted on there.
that's all adjusted on the bottom now. And get the screws tightened down. This should be pretty close. Yeah, that, that's good. I won't even have to adjust that. That stays good most of the time. So now we're switched over now, so we can uh, be set up for ID grinding. What we need to do Let's take our spin fixture. What you're gonna, what we're using to grind with is a CBM plated wheel. Uh, I can't remember what the grit uh, is on this. Uh, I tried to get uh, as fine as I could, uh, but. It still feels real coarse. I think it was a maybe an 80 grit. I think is what they have on there. Uh, but this, uh, when you get in that small diameters, uh, at least with MSC, you don't have a whole lot of choices. And so we're going to chuck up on that pretty tight because we want to try to keep the flex out. We uh, already put a pin in this hole. And we already indicated in within probably less than a thou. Uh, we got a 70 thousandths diameter pin going into an 80 thousandths hole. That on one side we're going to grind out to 92 thou diameter. The other side we're going to grind out to 94. So uh, at this stage what we're going to do is we're going to try to get that lined up without the spindle on. Uh, we're going to line that up and get us real close on the center line of that hole. I won't need to indicate it because I'll be plenty close enough. Like I said, there's only 10 thousandths difference between uh, the two here. And so uh, I can go in right now and I can spin this spindle with my finger and I don't feel any drag. So we'll take a cleanup cut, see where we're at. Looks like we got a hundred percent cleanup. One thing I have uh, this set, so I'm running about sixty thousand RPMs, and it's actually slow. I think we should be well over a hundred thousand RPMs on here, but sixty thousand is as fast as we can go. The smaller the hole, the faster RPM you need to go. And I'm going to use gauge pins to check and see where I'm at. And if you was watching, uh, I was taking just a lot of blank passes because I know I'm going to have some flex in that little well, a wheel, that along with a stick out. So the 85 does not go in.
83 actually feels pretty nice. Go ahead and feel how what that feels like, Mike. And these are <coughs> underpins, right? Yeah, those are two tenths under on an average. All right. So that's that's about 83 thousandths. Uh, and because that pin is probably about two tenths under, it's probably right on the money the way that feels. A lot of this is going to be feel. We're not going to be able to make an exact perfect gauge that will uh, make one that will be functional that he can use until we can uh, uh, work something out that's even closer. So that was 83 thousandths. Basically what we're going to do on uh, this, we're starting with the low small diameter. Uh, we're going to try to shoot for 92 and uh, the reason we're starting with this is because if we overshoot it and then we can make this the 94 side and have a second chance at the 92 over here. So we're going to shoot to get uh, the 92 pin which is about two tenths. We're going to shoot to get that uh, to go in there and maybe feel just a little bit of slop and then it will be hopefully just a couple tenths over 92 and that will be the no-go side. So the digital I have it set uh, if I needed 10,000 to take off, I really need to have the digit going for five. I don't have it set for the radius. Uh, and I hate switching back and forth because sometimes I forget and I'll mess the part up. So, so anyways, uh, it takes a while to get 4,000 even out of a small hole like, or 8,000 is what we should have took off, out of a small hole like that because you got a lot of that wheel time to cut. It's wanting to flex on you. And, and you got to you just give it plenty of time to clean up. Let's see, so we should be about 90. If things worked out right and we got uh, one for one, we should be at about a 90,000 so now. And it doesn't want to go in. Yeah, so we're, we're close. The 89 goes in, it feels a little loose. The 90 does not. So we're really close. And so this is what you have to do. You're going to have to kind of sneak up on the part. We'll take another thou and maybe a couple tenths out, see where we're at. And that last thousandths is going to be a little bit slow. We're going to just sneak up on it. Uh, the finish. The best these eyes can tell on something that small doesn't look too bad, but it's really hard to get a good finish with these small wheels. So they can be up to two tenths off, and this is actually three tenths under 90 according to the mic. So now I know pretty much where I'm at. I'm going to set my digital to zero, and we're at about 90, uh, 90 and, or 91, right? Almost 91. We're shooting for 92. I have just a little over a thousand, so I got to go because. Uh, if I can get the 92, let's see what that pin measures. Yeah, 
you know, the 90, 92 pins only a tenth and a half under. So if I can get that feel or just a little bit looser uh, on uh, this 91.85 pin, uh, and then we're, we're going to have a, a good no-go gauge here. Mike was just asking if we're putting oil on there. What's happening is there's an oiler in this unit uh, that it's a metered system, puts a certain amount of oil that comes with the air. And what's nice about this Planetary 500 is it kicks out a lot of the air here, uh, some air, and then you got this muffler system where, where a lot of the air goes and keeps it quieter. But you can see this oil film that's coming over here, and I kind of like that because it works kind of nice when you're dry grinding some lubricant there as well as the air coming out front and keeps everything from heating up so it's a nice setup check that out Mike that pin just barely wants to start so I want to go about two more tenths three more tenths Yeah. Check that out, Mike. That side's a tenth smaller than the other. One side goes in, the other does not. about maybe two more tenths. Two more tenths? All right. Yep. side goes in. That side goes in easier. So, yeah, for that pin to go in uh, the way it is, it has to be uh, at least 92, but I'm guessing uh, just by the feel that uh, we're about 92 thousandths and one tenth. It feels real nice. Yeah, and you know, for what for what they're uh, for what they're doing with the part, I think that'll be that'll be plenty good. Okay, we're gonna turn the part around, set up, and we'll grind the other side. We got the no go uh, part done. Now we got to do the go. <clears throat> the shape of this, if in case you're wondering. Uh, we have a smaller diameter in here. We had to hog all this meat away. Uh, when we were machining this because uh, for our little torches it had too much mass for us uh, and we couldn't get it hot enough so we relieved a lot of this but what was going to happen now it was going to make the grinding a little more difficult if I try to set this in the V uh, it's not going to work if I try to hang on to just one side over here it's going to be hard so I, I have this little kind of V block insert uh, that you can stick in there and and now that uh, uh, the thickness of this is thicker than what we have on the sides and so that works pretty nice for doing uh, double step things like this
should be pretty close to the 92 pin yet. Yeah, I stopped within a tenth of where we're at and this pin is fitting just about the same. Oh good deal. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. And that's what's kind of nice is uh, when you get the one side in, you know where you're at digitally wise, uh, the next side goes a lot faster. So on this pin, we need to get this, we're right at 92 now. Here's a, a blueprint, it's kind of dirty, a uh, bit uh, of what we're making. What we're doing is trying to make a go and no-go gauge uh, for this 94 plus nothing minus 2. And it's only sticking out about seven thousandths. So everything's a sharp edge on there. And he's got to get this so it'll slide in one side and it won't slide in the other. And then he knows he's got a good part that'll be within that tolerance. So we need at least a thou and about eight tenths roughly. Probably a thou and six tenths. shy of where I want it to be. And that just wants to start, so let's measure. And it's probably good I uh, stop. It's 90, 93 and 8. 93 and 8 and a half. So let's go right here. Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. That uh, just barely wants to start at two tenths under 94. Oh yeah, perfect. And so that's one of the uh, reasons why uh, instead of going the full amount I wanted, I, I stayed about two or three tenths shy, sparked it out, maybe had a little more flex in the wheel. But uh, this gauge, it's uh, I think going to work good enough until we can come up with something better. And uh, it'll be just something that he can quickly check while he's running these parts in the CNC lathe. And Mike, won't you uh, give us an update on the customer uh, and how many of these a month that you're looking at running? Um, yeah, so he uh, stopped in there the other week. He, he likes the process. Um, he liked the parts. Um, so that's why we're making this gauge. And uh, it'll probably be about four to 500 a month, uh, depending on how many they're using. They said they've been going through quite a bit lately, so it may be a little more. Um, but I think internally we'll probably run batch runs of maybe a thousand or two just to you know have someone on the shelf for them. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's uh, it'll go real smooth. So now it's just figuring out my tool life with the uh, with the inserts, seeing how much money it's going to cost us. <laughs> yeah. What we'll do now, um, we'll let Adam take over and we'll see if he can get some of his close up just pictures so that you can see the finish in there. Uh, can you see the finish? My eyes aren't real good. Yeah, I can't see. it, it looks pretty comparable good? to the outside, yeah. Okay, so so anyways, uh, Adam will try to get some pictures that we can just post up there so that you can see that as well. And uh, So anyhow, that's how you're taking a Planet 550 uh, air spindle, 60,000 RPMs, uh, 70 thousandths diameter CBN wheel, uh, starting out with an 80 thousandths hole and, and cleaning these up uh, to the tolerances that uh, we were shooting for. So everything worked out good. Uh, I'm pretty happy. Hopefully Mike's yeah. happy. And, uh, so we'll see you next time.